In this video, we're going to show you how you can make your own circuit board. Circuits are part of your everyday life, including phones, computers, and even lights. Today, we're going to see in the dark by building our own mini flashlight. We start off by drawing what we want to make on the computer. This means that we can check that our design is good, and also helps us to get an accurate final circuit that all of our parts will fit into. This also allows us to easily change and print the circuit. Next, we take the circuit that we've made on the computer and print it out with a laser printer onto some glossy magazine paper. We now have an image of our circuit on paper. We take a board that's covered with a thin layer of copper called copper clad, which you can buy online or at an electronics hobby store. This board will end up being our actual circuit. First, we cut it to the same size as our paper circuit. We score it on both sides with a utility knife, and then it snaps pretty easily. We finish repairing this by wiping it down with some acetone to get rid of dirt and fingerprints. To get the image that we want on the board, we tape the paper to the copper board so that the toner is touching the copper. Then, we set a clothes iron to its highest temperature and we press down on the board as hard as we can for about 5 minutes. When we heat the board with a paper circuit, the plastic in the toner will melt and stick to the copper. In the next step, we use this melted toner like a stencil to get rid of the copper that we don't want on our final board. To remove the paper from the copper, we dunk the entire board into water and wait a couple minutes. Then, we peel the paper right off the copper, leaving the toner against the copper. Sometimes the hot iron does not melt the entire circuit onto the copper, so we take a permanent marker and pencil in the parts that the iron missed. Now, we're going to etch the board. We're going to use a chemical called ferric chloride, which you can buy online or at an electronics hobby store. Ferric chloride removes the copper that isn't covered by the toner. It will react with metals, but it won't react with plastic. It will stain pretty much anything it touches bright yellow, so we've put down a plastic garbage bag and put on safety glasses to protect our eyes. The board needs to sit in the ferric chloride for 10 minutes or so, depending on how vigorously you stir it. If we pull it out halfway, we see that the copper towards the outside of the board has disappeared. Now that we've gotten rid of the extra copper, we can get rid of this toner. We wipe it away with some more acetone, and now we can see the shiny copper circuit that matches our original paper circuit. Next, we need to drill holes into the board so that we can put the parts of the circuit onto the board. We use a small drill bit that is smaller than the circles on our printed circuit. We also drill on top of another piece of wood to make sure we don't damage other surfaces. Now we're ready to put the circuit together. To attach the parts to our circuit board, we'll use a soldering iron. This tool gets really hot, 700 degrees Fahrenheit, and melts a special metal called solder onto our board and parts. It's like glue for electronics. We'll attach the battery holder, switch, resistor, and LED, making sure to put the LED in the right orientation. While soldering, it's important to heat both the part and the board, and then let the solder melt by touching those instead of the soldering iron. This ensures that the solder will provide a good electrical and mechanical connection. Notice that we solder everything with wires on the same side as the copper, except for the battery holder, because the copper on the board actually connects to one side of the battery. Now that we've put everything together, we can test it. If we flip the switch, the light turns on. Everything is amazing! Finally, when you're cleaning up, please don't dump the ferric chloride straight down the drain. It will hurt the environment and corrode your plumbing. Instead, neutralize it by slowly pouring in baking soda until it stops reacting. It will foam a lot. Once it's neutralized, it is safe to pour down the drain.